Good morning children. Welcome back to another session at the Student Faith Academy. Let me start by telling you a short story. An old priest living in a home for retired clergy was very fond of gardening. He was given a small patch of land in the backyard where he grew some vegetables. He would spend hours in that little plot watering his vegetables and watching them grow. One day, a group of his former parishioners came to visit him. He took them to his little garden. Imagine his delight when he noticed that some of his greens had began to bloom and bear fruit. There were tomatoes pushing their red cheeks out of their shoot. He paused and reflected, gave a sigh and smiled. He turned to his visitors and said to them, You know, you are like my vegetable patch. So clearly do I remember you as little children in my Sunday school. Some of you I have even had the privilege of getting married. I feel so proud to see that you have bloomed so beautifully. I wish I had the energy to revisit all the parishes where I was, only to see the fruits of my labor. Reflection Why do you think the priest compared his former parishioners to his vegetable patch. What similarities do you see? Is there any achievement of yours that you are very proud of? Why did the old priest wish that he could go and revisit his old parishes? Children, let us link this story to St. Paul. He was very keen also to revisit the communities he founded. Let's see where he went and why he went there. At Ephesus, Paul meets some Christians who had not received or understood the full message of Christianity. Apollos from Alexandria was one such Jewish Christian. Gifted like Paul, he was well versed in Jewish scriptures and able to relate this to the Christian message. He spoke accurately the things about Jesus, boldly speaking in the synagogue. Paul also encountered another group of disciples, not yet fully initiated into Christianity. Both Apollos and these disciples had received only John's baptism and had not been baptized into Jesus or received the Holy Spirit in the laying on of hands. The Gospels of Matthew and Luke give us an idea of the difference between the baptism of John and that of Jesus. John preached condemnation and a threat to eternal damnation. He urged complete change of heart through their own effort and strength. While Jesus preached on the other hand about the good news of God's grace. Through Jesus and the action of the Holy Spirit our condemnation have been lifted and we are saved. John's preaching and baptism was the first stage that made one aware of one's sinfulness and the need to a change of heart. All we have to do is to believe in Jesus Christ and be open to receive the Holy Spirit. God's power versus magic. Healing have always attracted large crowds as we see even today. Peter and Paul are able to heal not through their own power but in the name of Jesus. The result is that the Ephesians Christian community 
breaks away from the occult pagan practices, burning their books of magic, which cost a sizable amount. The riot in Ephesus. Paul's preaching not only end the magical practices of the Ephesian Christians, but also shook the foundation of a worldwide worship of Artemis and her famous temple in Ephesus, one of the seven wonders of the Asian world. The city was therefore on the brink of a serious riot. The town clerk had to intervene and quieten them. Paul revisits his churches. Paul revisits again his communities at Philippi, Thessalonica, Berea, Corinth or Greece. Paul preached first to the Jews, then to the Gentiles, founded a Christian community. Paul often kept in touch with these communities through visits or through letters. Later Paul returns to Jerusalem. Visiting several small islands, he calls for the elders of Ephesus and makes his farewell address. Luke gives us two farewell discourses, one by Jesus and the other by Paul. Luke represents Jesus as he instructs the twelve, Do this in memory of me. Jesus in his farewell address gave his disciple the Eucharist, conferred leadership on the twelve apostles and gave them the true meaning of Christian leadership which is service and not domination. Luke presents Paul as a chief model for a Christian bishop. Elders must oversee the church with a service that is self-sacrificing, authentic teaching, careful pastoring. He must not serve for a personal profit and he must be prepared to courageously face attacks from outside or within the flock. Paul's speech in Act 20 of Farewell Addresses summons the elders, highlights his own examples, testifies that he did not fall in his duty, refers to his own approaching death, encourages them to face future problems, prophesizes the coming of false teachers and apostasy, blesses his followers, prays with them, exchanges farewell gesture. Paul farewell addresses stresses the role of the pastor or bishop, care for the poor and weak, courage in facing persecution and obstinacy, and the importance on to Christ's true message in the face of the widespread heresy. Children, Please sit in a prayerful position. We will now start with the word of God. Please listen attentively to the following reading from Acts 20 verse 28 to 38. Take heed to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseas to care for the church of God which he obtained with the blood of his own son. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock, and from among your own selves will arise men speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore be alert. Remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. And now I command you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you the inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I coveted no one silver or gold or apparel. You yourself know 
that these hands ministered to my necessities and to those who were with me. In all things I have shown you that by so toiling one must help the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It's more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had spoken thus, he knelt down and prayed with them all. And they all wept and embraced Paul and kissed him, sorrowing most of all because of the word he had spoken, that they should see his face no more, and they brought him to the ship. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Children, let us pause for a few moments to let the message sink in from the word of God. Let us close our eyes and reflect on the word of God. What instructions did Paul give to the passerbys and elders of the church in Ephesus? What did he warn them about? Why did they weep and why were they deeply distressed? There were great troubles that came upon the church in Ephesus, that's in Turkey, in the years that followed Paul's departure. These troubles arose from within their own ranks and almost destroyed this Christian community. Let us spend a few moments now praying for Christian communities who are facing persecution and problems from eternal rivalry. Prayer for Persecuted Christians O God of all nations, the one God who is and was and always will be in your providence, you willed that your church be united to the suffering of your Son. Look with mercy on your servants who are persecuted for their faith in you. Grant them perseverance and courage to be worthy imitators of Christ. Bring your wisdom upon leaders of nations to work for peace among all peoples. May your spirit open conversion for those who contradict your will that we may live in harmony. Give us a grace to be united in truth and freedom and to always seek your will in our lives. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us. Though I've never seen you, I know you so well. You've shown me, you've taught me, you've loved me as well. I used to fight you, bring your people down. But in blindness I found you and turned my life around. Your love is not measured in steps or in time. It will not wither or ever lose its shine. It fills me up, helps me carry so much I'll always sing your song I've spread your word to many to the Gentiles and the Jews I've tried to bring them closer but there's still so much work to do I've written of your teachings traveled to many lands I've tried hard to live your way and help them understand Your love is not measured in step 
for the week imagine that you are saint paul after 2 years of visiting ephesus you are concerned about the church there write a short epistle a letter to the ephesians encouraging them to keep their faith alive warning them about their false teachers giving them instructions on living a good christian life